All right, so this problem reads, calculate the centripetal force on the end of a 100 meter long wind turbine blade, so the radius is 100 meters, that's rotating at 0.5 revolutions per second. And we're gonna assume the mass of that blade is four kilograms. So the mass of that is four kilograms. All right, so we know that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. If we have that mass at the end of that rotating blade, we need to know of that four kilogram mass, we need to know what that centripetal acceleration is. Now there's two ways to determine centripetal acceleration. It can be determined by v squared over r, so using the linear velocity, the velocity at that location, at that radius, we can also we know what the centripetal acceleration is if we have the rotation or the angular velocity. In this example, we're told that the angular speed, it's rotating at 0 0.5 revolutions per second. But in this relationship, if we're going to use the second relationship to determine the centripetal force such that we have mass times omega squared r. We need that angular velocity in radians per second. So we're first going to convert our angular velocity in revolutions per second to radians per second. We know that for one revolution we have two pi radians, which gives us a rotational speed of 3.14 radians per second. All right, now I can use that in my relationship. We have a mass of four, a 3.14, that's the angular speed, we square that, and we have a radius of 100 meters. So our centripetal force is 3,947 newtons. Perfect. So recognizing that we're looking for centripetal force on that four kilogram rotating blade, we have two ways to determine the centripetal acceleration. We've determined that we have a relationship for angular speeds, and we're gonna use that second determination. We need to recognize that angular velocity has to be in radians per second. Do that conversion, and then use our relationship. All right, good job.